Mundial de Sistemas Alimentares das Nações Unidas, além de prestar homenagens a Alison Paulinelli, indicado para o Prêmio Nobel da Paz. São parceiros e participam neste evento. Câmara de Negócios Agrícolas da África do Sul, AGBIS, a Aliança para a Revolução Verde na África, Agra, Aliança Biodiversity International e Centro Internacional de Agricultura Tropical, CIAT, Centro Agronômico Tropical de Pesquisa e Ensino, CATI, Centro de Cooperação Internacional em Pesquisa Agronômica para o Desenvolvimento, CIRAD. Escola Superior de Agricultura, Luiz de Queiroz, da Universidade de São Paulo. Fontagro, Mecanismo de Cofinanciamento Sustentável para o Desenvolvimento de Tecnologias Agrícolas na América Latina, Caribe e Espanha. Foodtech Hub Brasil, Organização das Nações Unidas para Alimentação e Agricultura e sua Agenda Global para a Pecuária Sustentável, Universidade de Cabianga, Quênia, e Universidade de Van Hagenen, Holanda. Informamos que o link para a assinatura da lista de presença do dia de hoje está na descrição dessa transmissão pelo YouTube. Participam dessa cerimônia o presidente da Embrapa, senhor Celso Moretti, o coordenador de agronegócio da Fundação Getúlio Vargas, FGV, e ministro da Agricultura no período de 2003 a 2006, o senhor Roberto Rodrigues, o presidente da Associação Brasileira dos, dos Produtores de Milho, Abra Milho, e ministro da Agricultura no período de 1974 a 1979, senhor Alisson Paulinelli, e o diretor do IICA, senhor Manuel Otero. Convidamos para dar as boas-vindas o diretor-geral do IICA, senhor Manuel Otero. Bem-vindos a todos e a todas à a, a Semana Internacional da Agricultura Tropical. En la persona de la ministra de Agricultura, Pecuaria y Abastecimiento de Brasil, Teresa Cristina, del ex ministro Roberto Rodríguez, quiero felicitar y agradecer a las autoridades presentes, a los especialistas que estarán con nosotros y a todas las instituciones brasileñas. We'd like to welcome all the Brazilian enterprises and international companies, especially Celso Moretti, who has worked very hard to make this important event a reality. We are going to talk about the tropical agricultural model which Brazil has and which has been a model, a point of reference that will allow, that allow the country to become one of the main engines and actors in agriculture throughout the world. The discussions and will be important to uh, feed into the United Nations Food Systems Summit. This will take place at the end of September 2021. The Council of the ICA has thought that this would be a, an important uh, opportunity for us to have a discussion ahead of this summit. Our continent and especially our agricultural producers can be heard. I would like to say that this International Week of Tropical Agriculture can become a great movement, mainly for our region and for the countries of the Americas. 
to take as a model this phenomenal example of Brazil. This has been a real agricultural revolution. Yeah, start, uh, at the start of my career, I was able to see two different countries in the 1980. I saw a vulnerable Brazil with uh, uh, an importing country. And then I found another country in which I saw the, the, the visionary aspect of its leaders that led to this transformation. One of the main architects of this story was the uh, then minister. I am referring to uh, Minister Alison Paolinelli, who used scientific knowledge and institutional development as a base. And I was speaking with a friend, the Minister of Agriculture and Livestock of Honduras, and he said, I want an embrapa for my country. This is my dream. The trajectory of Minister Alison Apayo Lenelli uh, was, was, was done through his time as minister. And the use of science as the only sustainable pathway to food security, this trajectory allowed for him to be nominated to the Nobel Peace Prize, but also the consolidation of Embrapa. He started a, a scholarship program for Brazilian students for dif at different research centers throughout the world. ICA has already played a role in this pathway. And the first president of Embrapa had a prolific career in ICA, but I'd like to make some reflections on the future. First of all, on this event, I think it is timely to talk about the need of institutionalizing this International Week of Tropical Agriculture. The main challenge of ICA is that no country in the continent should be left behind in agriculture and life start careering. And there are, there is room for using technology to move this forward. And we have a golden opportunity to bring together our knowledge and the, the experience of Brazil. And we need these inputs to guarantee the uh, food security of our nations. Migration towards cities and improve uh, the livelihood and return to having the rural areas as areas of opportunities. We want to see that IICA is part of this to ensure inclusion, sustainability. We are working on rural extension with the use of mobile telephones to uh, communicate and to provide information for these players who along with their families are the soul of rurality. And this is how we should approach the future. We are saying that agriculture is not a part of the pro uh, problems, but rather of the solutions to uh, confront the major obstacles that uh, uh, prevent us from developing our peoples. I would like to pay tribute to Mr. Alison Paolinelli. I would like to uh, pay tribute to all the farmers in Brazil. Prosperity 
and the food security we hope will be spread to every corner of the Americas that we would have the production of healthy foods and the Brazil's agriculture has shown us the way. Thank you very much and may you have a good international week of tropical agriculture. Thank you very much, Director General, for those words. Alison Paolinelli was officially nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. The nomination was approved in the Norwegian Council of the Nobel Peace Prize and by the director of the Luis de Queiroz School of Agriculture Derval Doradaneta, miner from Bambui, Paulini became an agronomist at the School for Agronomy in Lavras. In 1971, he became Secretary of Agriculture in Mina Gerais and created incentives and technological innovation which transformed the state into becoming the major producer of coffee coffee in Brazil. In 1974, he accepted the invitation of the president to become Minister of Agriculture and tried to modernize Embrapa and promote economic uh, development. Uh, and he It was at his initiative that in 2006, Alison Paulinelli was awarded with the World Food Prize in recognition of his work to help to improve the quality and quantity, as well as the availability of food in the world. The transformation of the sterile region in Brazil into one of the most productive areas in the world was this, the main achievement. The current uh, nomination for the Nobel Peace Prize uh, was done on the basis of his dedication to scientific knowledge and the development of tropical agriculture. Now we are going to listen to a video with uh, uh, Mr. Paulene, Paulinelli accepted this uh, nomination at some we have produced so much food of good quality furthermore more than 800 million persons are still suffering from hunger and many more we need a global pact for the provision of food through the use of science and technology innovation so that all peoples are in a position to produce what they need to eat. We need to create conditions that are appropriate and through a social international pact, be able to bring all the regions of the world, especially Latin America and the Caribbean and Africa, Asia, to become permanent sources who have been sources of migration. We therefore need the support of leaders, international leaders, so that we are able to achieve this and to provide peace and security for the regions that have been oppressed because of climatic, climate change and 
um, the impact of global phenomena, our joint efforts will generate the use of science and innovation, as well as technology and knowledge through the mobilization of the of young people, women who, who would participate in this process so that the objective of providing necessary food for all, improving incomes and establishing stability, stability. But we need to work together, we need to act together through the use of science and technology and the mobilization of all these oppressed areas. We hope that this will be done for the benefit of all the peoples of the world. This is my dream. Let's do it together. No, we have the link to uh, the link for today's meeting is in the registration section. So we would ask you to um, give the floor at this point to the Minister of Agriculture, Livestock and Supply. Uh, Mr. Former Minister, Mr. Roberto Rodriguez, thank you very much, dear friends of ICA. I think this is an opportune moment to be holding this webinar on tropical agriculture with respect to all of the countries of the, the hemisphere, and especially I would like to comment on this whole question of national tropicalism and special modes of production. This event has been very well prepared with a great visionary approach and the importance of uh, foods and tropical foods. I'd like to very quickly say that we up, up to the 70s, Brazil was imported, uh, an importer of food, as was stated, up till the 1970s, as I said, and Brazil was a net importer of food, but on the basis of science, technology, and innovation, Embrapa led the way under the auspices of the Brazilian government, changed the situation completely. In the Cerrado, the, we have an inhospitable area which has transformed into a productive area. Embrapa is, which is the organization, the research organizations has set up a system and it led the way in the in productive production in the Cerrado and com converted into a major center for the production of food. And the volumes of food production are quite extraordinary. We have a few numbers that will show you and prove this. In the nine from the 90s to today, the areas, the cultivated area in cereals grew from has grown almost five times more than the original um, volume. This use of technology in Brazil with that 68 million hectares are being sown, have been planted with cereals and grains. How about every, quite several times a year, this public sum has been increasing year by year. So if we have, Today, the same opportunity that we had 30 years ago, we had even much more. We would have a far more um, harvest than we in this year because in 2021. So we 
targets is uh, we increase the production through technology, through research. And for this reason, uh, this gentleman is considered among us as the one of the greatest living Brazilians when the in the whole world Embrapa shows its work. We were an imported country uh, uh, importing um, food 50 years ago and now we are the country with the greatest tra net trade surplus in food production. It's very important because this is due to science and research and it is generated through Embrapa and other Brazilian research organs. And also with the vision of maintaining sustainability in keeping with Mr. Paulo Neli's vision. There was a study that showed that there's several, we have to increase the production of food to feed millions more people who need so. And this is something that we have seen in the pandemic. We have a clear vision of the challenge facing humanity for the next few decades. That is, and it's going to be the question of food security. And this food security can be achieved through tropical agriculture. And the tr tropical agriculture has amazing possibilities. And this, under the leadership of this great Brazilian, Mr. Paulinella, Paulinelli, this from the South, from Latin America, for Africa, for all the rest of the world, we can feed the world their efforts to develop. Um, this and this seminar of ECA together with Embrapa shows those who are with us, those who have the possibility to ensure that agriculture will feed the world following the vision of Mr. Alison Paulinelli, who is your candidate for the Nobel Peace Prize. With mechanization and technology, which is required for this. We, those who have worked with Paul, Mr. Paul Nell and with support of 24 countries in ECA can attest to this. This is, this Mr. Paul Nell will be revolutionary candidate. It's, it's this legacy, is his vision. I am going to leave a message for all of you here. That is tropical agriculture is going to feed the world and therefore we there's in, in this case there'll be no country where there should be hunger we'd like to thank uh, the director general manuel otero thank you so much for having taken the initiative to organize this event thank you very much and i wish you every success thank you so much for your kind words, Dr. Rodriguez, and then we go to um, Dr. Alison Paulinelli, who is connected with us, and we're going to give him the floor at this point. The microphone, please. Your microphone is on me, is on mute, Mr. Paulinelli. Microphone, please. Thank you very much, Barbara. It is a great pleasure for me to be participating in this event, which has been promoted and organized by um, Ika and Embrapa. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to discuss with you this suggestion that Brazil has, over the last few years, uh, this suggestion has given to the world and that tropical agriculture should be the solution for the poorest regions and the hungriest regions and those that have the greatest difficulties on the this planet. It is very important for us to consider that tropical agriculture was born out of a scientific effort, um, effort and technical um, effort for innovation. For those uh, regions that produce less, the most unproductive areas, and some of the most degraded areas that we had in Brazil. In fact, we had 
we had almost two um, square kilometers of degraded land. So, so all of these areas will allow us to use technology and develop this technology and this land so that we can give the country and the rest of the world conditions and the possibilities for self-sufficiency and food security. It's very important for those who are interested in seeing the social um, transformations that has uh, helped and reassured many countries, especially the industrialized countries that are, of course, suffering from uh, the pressure of waves of migration, ongoing waves of migration that has caused the, some disquiet in these countries. And so these migrants sometimes do not adjust well in the air, in the places that they might migrate. But sometimes this causes some disturbances. Apart from this, there is also the effect, um, this adjustment, this need for adjustment. And we see sometimes there is a rise in the risk of terrorism. This causes many countries to waste a lot of resources, not only to control migration, but also to um, control the possibilities of terrorism. It is not a suggestion that we uh, uh, there are some countries that in other, are in other parts of the planet, especially in tropical areas, we are proposing that we work together, we use technology that is being um, developed here in Embrapa, as well as in our universities, and as well as our scientific uh, institutions, and with the help of private initiatives from the private sector, we, we have confirmed that in Brazil, there and there used to be a vacuum in their poverty and misery. However, now with the development of these tropical areas, these regions have been transformed and there have been millions of new hectares of cultivated land. There are cities that have greater facilities, amenities, better living standards. And this is especially due to the health programs, education and security programs, increased and enhanced security. And new, new conditions, it is therefore, you must come there and pay and test and see uh, these cities that you, in Brazil, if you are going to find inhabitants who want to leave. On the contrary, they want more Brazilians to come to these regions so that we should deal with uh, to satisfy the demand for manpower and because there are many opportunities for work, great opportunities even more in the rural areas than in the major cities of Brazil. In the agricultural sector, the living conditions are far more uh, acceptable or better than 50 years ago. And it is important to say this because this is a situation that can be repeated in all other regions where you, where you can see hunger, extreme hunger and poverty. It is therefore necessary that very urgently we deal with it in the, in the same way that we dealt with the rural areas here in Brazil. I am quite sure that this technology is viable, it is economical and it yields results. It gives income to rural populations. Therefore, we're very anxious to see if the possibility to where we can have a joint effort of developed countries, 
so that instead of using their resources exclusively for to uh, to deal with the consequences of migration, they should use resources where in those areas where the causes, the real causes of these fruits, the root causes of of, prob, of migration reside. So if we invested a little more money in this in these areas, of course, we still do not have uh, sufficient money and technology yet, but if we had even a little more technology, we would have a substantial change. And then the tropical peoples of the world would not be obliged to, um, to be net importers of food, but would be self-sufficient. And as we, as is the case here in Brazil, in fact, they could also produce for international markets and would achieve the food security that we all wish. This is, I would hope that through this webinar, we, and with Embrapa and ICA, we would have more detailed discussions on this, because I think that it's a question of growth great concern to me that we see such differences in the populations across the world and which will create war, lack of understanding, and these are only um, disruptions of world peace. I'm sure that this, this process that we have in Brazil can be replicated in other tropical areas of the world where there is still hunger and extreme poverty. And this is my proposal so that the world can live in a more equal, egalitarian way and that social peace will reign. Thank you so much. We'd like to thank Dr. Allison for his uh, intervention. And now we'd like to ask the president of AMBRAPA, Mr. Celso Moretta, to speak. Thank you very much. It is a pleasure for AMBRAPA to uh, participate in the International Week for Tropical Agriculture. And I would like to uh, greet our minister, uh, Ms. Teresa Cristina, who unfortunately is not here because of other duties, but we have a video that was made by our minister. I would like to greet the Director General of ICA, Mr. Manuel Otero, congratulations on the work being done by ICA. We are very pleased to have you with us today. I'd like to also greet my friend Gabriel Delgado, the new ICA representative in Brazil. We hope that we will be able to work together even further. We'd like to, I'd like to greet the coordinator of agribusiness of the FGV, Mr. Roberto Rodriguez. Congratulations on your leadership in the agricultural sector. It is a pleasure to have you with us as well as Mr. Adir, Dr. Alison Paolinelli. As you can see, he's an icon of Brazilian agriculture. Responsible for Brazil's uh, experience and experiments in agriculture and thus has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. And I believe he's even worthy of more recognition throughout the world. I'd like to greet Mr. Pianiseku, who is here with us as well. The federal deputy Aline, 
who was uh, recently elected to as head of the uh, relevant body. It is a pl pleasure to have you with us this week. And I would like to greet all the authorities here present who are with us on YouTube, on the ECA uh, uh, website and the Embrapa website. I'd like to speak very quickly in these few minutes because a lot has already been well said by Alison Carolyn Nelly. I'd like to talk about what has happened in Brazil over the last 50 years and what we have learned with our people. We, be, we believe that com, one of the ways of communicating and telling stories, I would like to tell the story which has already been mentioned by Mr. Roberto Rodriguez and Alison Paolinelli is that the, this uh, development of uh, tropical agriculture, what we have seen is the availability of adequate and appropriate temperatures for the rearing of animals. And we have uh, the challenge of pests, plagues and diseases, uh, problems with having soils that are of the appropriate quality. This is the reality of tropical countries. Roberto Rodriguez already said that Brazil had been an importer of food, producer of sugar and coffee, and we imported food, uh, uh, milk from the United States, for example. In, in 1976, we were importing meat from Europe. And because of the Chernobyl accident, this was dangerous. Now we are producing beans for the population and we are exporting it. And we import beans from Mexico. It was during these 50 years that we in Brazil were able to create a sustainable model for tropical agriculture. That is based on science and technology, which has been a model for the world. Because the federal and state governments, state universities and private universities, along with Embrapa and the state res uh, agricultural research entities, uh, uh, in Paraná, Santa Catarina and others, with rural extension programs, along with producers who played a, an essential role, we have managed to have a robust, innovative agricultural system that is a model for the world. And this robust, innovative system has broken um, has come out of public um, private uh, partnerships. Roberta has already mentioned uh, much of what ha of this, and I could just summarize the three main pillars of this fantastic transformation in tropical agriculture were the transformation that was promoted by Alison Paolinelli. Tropicalization of plants and animals. Brazil also produces wheat. We used to import it, but now we are able especially in Minas de Gerais, uh, produce hectares of this product. And we have a sustainable platform with biological controls. 
which have ensured this. Just to add, coffee culture over the last 25 years, and we have many producers here with us, have increased the production of, uh, of coffee four times. Our production has quadrupled over the, those years. We have uh, an increase of over 5 million liters of milk over the last 40 years. We have increased the production of poultry seven times. Those who are here can attest to this, that this is what we have achieved over the last 50 years. And one important point I must make is that the use of science and technology have contributed over the last 40 years to the re reduction of the prices in the food basket. So we are doubling uh, uh, minimal salaries, basic salaries and income. And just to conclude, we are in the second revolution of Brazilian tropical agriculture based on sustainability. Basically, the forest code in 2012 and conserva conservationist practices as well as carbonization technologies have uh, assisted and helped Brazilian uh, agriculture with the protection of soils, reducing or allowing for uh, this sustainability. Our association has made it possible for us to produce carbon neutral meat in association with dairy farmers. Low carbon level. We're going to continue along this line of decarbonization. And we know that the COVID pandemic has posed a lot of uh, challenges, but we note that uh, Brazilian agriculture has not stopped. Jobs continue, incomes continue to come in. And we continue to feed over 170 countries throughout the world. And as has been said here already, Brazil has become one of the greatest suppliers of bioenergy. And we are demonstrating what we have done to the world. We will become one of the biggest suppliers of biocommodities in a few years. This is based on productivity. Will increase. And we will be also able to in increase we have dedicated and devoted many hectares to the uh, uh, 
to 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 green the production of green and we hope to double this production of green by some 500 uh, tons. We know that technology will help us to move in that direction. Lastly, but not least, I'd like to pay tribute to Embrapa and the candidacy of our dear Alison Paolinelli. We are grateful to him and our brothers from the region and from other regions of the world, Africa, Asia. And we hope that together we will be able to move towards food security with the support of other Alison Paolinelli's from other parts of the world who will advance food security and the advancement of our peoples. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your words. So we are going to present the Minister of Agriculture, Livestock and Supply, Mrs. Uh, Teresa Cristina Brazil. Uh, Cristina, unfortunately, she was unable to come to be present with us because she has other pressing engagements. But she has sent her a video. So good morning, all of you. I would like to thank you so much for the possibility of participating in this very important event. The week of trap tropical agriculture is indeed an important event. I would like to thank Imbrapa and Ika for having organized this event, which recognizes the achievements of of agriculture and our efforts towards attaining food sustainability. We, uh, together with Paul, Mr. Paulinella, who can be considered as the father of Brazil's tropical agricultural sector. Unfortunately, I cannot be with you in the flesh, or even, but I'd like to participate and be with you. We know that we are going through a decisive moment in our national history. In, in the science and technologies of our country, we have been trying hard to achieve the, the sustainable development goals. And we have had very this year very important events, such as the summit on food security. We, we, we have to also do with respect to climate change, we have to honor our commitments and to comply with the climate commitments that have been undertaken by us, despite the fact that we are not responsible for global warming. But Brazil has done its part in carrying in innovation so that we can face up to the global challenges and in the supply of food and the use of our natural resources. We, we not only want to contribute, but to be leaders in this effort. I would like to especially thank Mr. Paulinella for his visionary leadership and his policies, as well as his conviction that with the use of the power of science, we can achieve our goals. And Brapa has led a transformation into, into one of of our country to one of the most productive areas in the region. He has helped transform agriculture and agriculture has indeed transformed Brazil. We have increased productivity and this changed our public policies to ensure productivity and food security. And 
we have adopted the plan so we have developed uh, te technology the, uh, but not like nitrogen fixing, for example, and we have conserved and we have increased production and conservation. It's, of course, we have the favorable natural and climatic conditions, but this is this situation is also due to the technology. We have possibility of having two harvests per year in the same area, and you can even go up to three harvest and we have integrated um, um, livestock farming with forests and we have this inter intensification of agriculture so that we can multiply food production we have uh, increased the basics of food supply we have uh, ensured preservation of the environment while doing so. This, we have shown our country's uh, commitment to the environment. We have become exporters of food and we, have ex we are exporting to many countries. So just 30% of agriculture, 30% of our land was used but now 66% has is intact, has a forest cover inta intact. This is just uh, it's an important part of the Amazon biome. A lot of our work of our technology is used by um, renewable sources of energy, for example. So this has reduced our carbon footprint and this, our carbon footprint, footprint is much lower than in other countries. Despite these extraordinary feats, we have suffered on the international scenario. People have been looking at us as enemies of nature because we are thought we are thought of as net deforesters that we have been deforesting the amazon and that is uh, the opinion that has been expressed of us in fact production of, of goods such as meat and beef and so and other products have been achieved without deforestation we are going, going to continue to be providers of food as well as technical services without mentioning other uh, agricultural practices that, that are not sustainable which we will not be which will not be pursuing there there are aspects such as subsidies that distort agricultural trade in, in the international markets. We tried to maintain production lines and the, the supply of agricultural inputs. In, therefore, events such as this, this week's uh, week of tropical is, um, agriculture are essential for recognizing the sustainable nature of our tropical agriculture. I would like to greet you all. I thank you so much, thank ECA for its participation in this event. I'd also like to thank all of the uh, representatives of the productive sector who have been seen the ministers and other personalities from Brazil and other countries for participating. We want to have intersectoral um, cooperation. And in this process, we will have the very valuable support of ICA and our own Embrapa. 
if we wanted to achieve all of our objectives for climate preservation and development, we must maintain diversity through the use of methods of production and cultivation that will supply food production. Without this diversity, we would have a world suffering from hunger with no food security. Tropical agriculture is not a part of the problem, but it is a part of the solution. Thank you so much. Agradecemos a, men a mensagem da ministra e encerramos essa sessão de abertura. E lembramos que o componente 2, panorama do would like to thank the minister for her input. We remind that the development of tropical agriculture I just like to say that we'll continue tomorrow at 11 o'clock and the link will be on the page, the web page of the event. You can have access to Embrapa page point punto verde um, dot agri, agri -trop. I wish you all a pleasant afternoon. Thank you so much. Un abrazo, Alison. Un abrazo, eh? Thank you so much, Alison. A warm hug to you. Vamos. Bem, muito obrigado a todos. Elaine, obrigado. Gracias a todos. Gracias, Rafael. Thank you all. Hola, ya terminó la interpretación. Muchas gracias a todas las intérpretes, a Rodolfo, a Rafael, a todos. Thank you. Sí, gracias, gracias, Ricardo. Yo creo que se quedó muy bien. Eh, Bárbara, muito obrigado, impecável. Desculpe os, as, ah, as alterações sim. de última hora. Eu que agradeço e desculpa aí qualquer coisa. Não, imagina, foi excelente. Uh, o, o, nós tivemos um, um, na verdade, um desentendimento, um desencontro com relação à participação do ministro. É, realmente, não, nós não tínhamos recebido a, a confirmação e, de última hora, eu tive que ligar para ele para ajudá-lo a, a se conectar no... No, no Zoom, né? mas assim, no final deu tudo certo, então agradeço muito a presença de todos. Presidente Evaldo, obrigado pela participação, nos vemos amanhã. É, Presidente Evaldo Vilela, do CNPq. E, bem, acredito que seja isso. Muito obrigado, viu, Elaine? Perfeito. Obrigada, gente, obrigada mesmo. Até logo. Até amanhã, sim? Até amanhã. Pura vida. Pura vida, beleza pura. Beleza pura, perfeito. <risos> perfeito. Sim, sí, nós outros temos um pura vida também, mas pura vida sí. é mais bonito. Violês, como ótimo. 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 E perfeito. Tenho que praticar mais. O português é importante. 